This may look like a banjo, and it may sound like a banjo too, but in reality it's a goat horn that I have retextured and with a simple data pack it's playing a different sound. What's important to note that all the other goat horns remain unchanged, I'm not modifying any of these, their behavior is exactly the same. Basically, we can add an infinite amount of instruments to Minecraft with a data pack, and I'm going to show you how. Whoosh. Throughout this tutorial, I'll be working on that custom item in here, in this command block. We'll be editing and tweaking the custom item as we face challenges. Now I mentioned that it will be in a data pack as well, however, for the sake of the tutorial and keeping things a little bit more clear, we'll be working in this command block chain over here. Of course, everything that we do in here you can later put in your own data pack. And finally, before we start the tutorial, I'm using of course a custom resource pack with custom models for the banjo and custom sounds. Now to follow this tutorial, you don't really have to have that. You can just leave custom model data out of your custom item. And of course, for custom sounds, you can use any default built-in Minecraft sound. So keep that in mind. With that out of the way, let's get started, shall we? Whoosh. So first of all, we want to give the nearest player in this case a goat horn. Bloop, bloop, there you go. Goat horn. You'll notice that by default, it will give ponder. This will come back later, remember that. Now, of course, to make this look like a banjo, I want to give it custom model data. And for my research pack, I'm setting it to one. And now we have a goat horn that plays ponder, but it looks like a banjo. So that's one step of the way there. And of course, again, if you don't have a research pack, you can skip this step. Now already we're running into a little bit of an issue, because how are we going to make this play a different sound? Well, we need to detect that we're using this item, of course. And for this, we'll be making a scoreboard. Objectives, add, here we want to give it a name. I'm going to call it goat horn used. That way we know that this one is when we use a goat horn. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky. We need to type in minecraft dot use colon minecraft dot goat horn. I did that wrong. There we go. Now, if we press enter, we'll have created a goat horn. Nope. <laughs> we'll have created a scoreboard that will detect when we use a goat horn like this one. Now just for the sake of this tutorial so that I can show you, I'm going to set the scoreboard that we just created to the sidebar. There we go. And now you can see when I use the goat horn, it adds one to my score over here. Cool, right? In fact, if we try it again, it adds another one over here. And it keeps doing that over and over and over. And we kind of don't really want that. We want it to reset every single time that we use it. And so the first thing we're going to do is somewhat counterintuitive. And that's we're going over to this last command block over here. And the way that we do that is we tap scoreboard players reset. And we'll find all the players that have a scores goat horn used. That was our scoreboard, right? Equals one or more. These two dots mean or more. Now it's not going to do anything yet because we haven't activated this. If we just let this run always, you can see it resets. In fact, every time I play it, you, it's really quick, but you can see it just blinks in and out of existence, right? This is good. This is what we want. So now we have a custom goat horn and we can detect when any goat horn is being used. That's pretty good. Now we just wanted to play a sound when we use a goat horn. And the way that we do that is we execute as all the players that have scoreboards of goat horn used equals one or more, right? We did the same thing earlier and we want this to happen at the location of the player. And at S here means the one that we've selected here with S. In other words, at S refers to here. Then we want to run a command that's called play sound. It's already filling it in for me here, so that's nice. Of course, you can use any of these other sounds if you want. It will ju work just as well. And for now, I'm just going to set it to master because that is easy. And here we define who can all hear it. And I'm going to say all the players because of course I want all my friends to hear it. Let's see if it works, shall we? Oh, well, that's interesting. I'm hearing both ponder and the sound of my banjo. First of all, it's good news. We got the sound of the banjo working. That's brilliant. But we don't want to hear ponder, do we? And so what we're going to do in here is we're going to add another command. And this is the stop sound command. So again, we're executing as the person who has the goat horn used at that location. And we're running stop sound for all the players. Here we can choose the category of sound. We're just using the star because that means all of them. And then we're just going for Minecraft item dot goat horn sound zero. 
Done. Now, do you remember how I said that by default the go turn is ponder? Well, ponder is sound zero. And so basically, we're stopping ponder from being played whenever we use a go turn. Let's have a look. There you go. We've got the banjo sound without the ponder. Unfortunately, that's not good enough for me because it also means that we, when we actually have the ponder go turn. Oh, well, yeah, that happens. It doesn't play Ponder, but it does play this one. So we need to work on that a little bit, don't we? Whoosh. What we want to do is differentiate our custom goat horn from the regular goat horn, right? And the way that we're going to do that is by adding a component called custom data. Now the custom data component is brilliant for these sorts of things. It allows you to add custom data, anything really, without it really interfering with the item itself. So we're opening curly brackets in here and here we can put in anything that we want as long as it looks like this. We have a name for the thing and then we have a value for the thing. So we want to give this a name that we'll remember, not a goat horn. That way we know these ones are not supposed to be goat horn. And we're going to add colon and then something, anything really, I'm just putting one. And we're going to get rid of the old one and we're going to grab a new one. And this one will now have that custom data attached to it, which we're going to use first in the first command block. We have detected who is using the goat horn and where they are. Now we're going to detect what they're holding. If items from the entity at S, remember that's our selector. Then we say where the item is supposed to be and they're holding it in their hand if they're playing it, right? So this is either the main hand or the off hand and weapon dot the little star means all of them is goat horn, but with custom data and we'll use a tilde over here instead, not a goat horn colon one. So basically by adding this, if items entity at s weapon anywhere is a goat horn with the custom data, not a goat horn colon one, only then is it going to run play sound, the banjo, whatever. Now we need to add that to this command block over here. And I am very lazy. So I'm just going to do this and copy this, copy and paste it in here. And let's have a look. If we play the goat horn banjo, we kind of expected that. That's how it worked before. But if I grab ponder over here, it will still play ponder. Look at that. We've now made a way to play custom sounds without interfering with the regular goat horns. Whoa, isn't that cool? Whoosh. Congratulations. You've just learned the basics for making custom goat horns, but we can go a little bit farther into this. Currently, we can only have one custom goat horn and not like, I don't know, infinite like I would like to have. And so we can take this a whole step farther by adding more customization to this goat horn over here. For example, we can give this an item name and we can just say banjo. Now it is a banjo. And then here in our first command block, we can add a condition to the item over here, right? We were checking if the item has the custom data, not a goat horn. We can also add a check for item name is banjo. And now basically this will only play when the item is a banjo. And let's wait for the cooldown so that I can show you what happens if it's not a banjo. This is technically not the banjo, right? Doesn't have the name, nothing happens. There we go. And basically now we can differentiate between different instruments. Now, just for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to add another one and we're going to call uh, bubble. And over here, I've added another command block where we are going to also detect bubble. And instead of bubble playing the banjo sound, it's going to play Minecraft block dot bubble column dot upwards ambient. There we go. And if we just grab this item now, this one is called bubble. Let's have a listen. It's a little bit faint, but you can hear it, right? It does bubbles. I'm trying to click again, but it still has a cooldown. And so now the one called bubble does bubble sounds. And the one called banjo does the banjo sound. And so now we've made a system that will make custom goat horns with custom sounds all without compromising on the regular goat horns in Minecraft. I think that's pretty cool, don't you? Also, if you're curious on how to customize this item even further, then definitely check out my previous tutorial on item components. And finally, one last thing, we're now able to detect when someone is using a custom goat horn and we're using that to play a sound, but you know, what if I told you, you could literally run anything off of that? 
anything you like at all. Let me take you to my theme park. Welcome to Percy's Park, my own theme park. Here I also have a banjo, and when I right click it, first of all we are going to get the sound, but also... We're going to get a donkey with a cart behind it, isn't that cool? And I, and, I, and I don't have any friends in here right now, but four people can sit in this cart. Now I'm showing you all this in hopes to inspire you. Of course, you don't have to just play a sound with custom goat horns. You can do anything you want, really. Hello. Whoosh. And so now you know how to make custom goat horns. If you're interested in the resource pack and the sounds, I'm going to put this up on my Patreon. You can get it if you become a member of my map maker tier. And I'll be putting all of these commands into a data pack, which you can get over on my Patreon as well. If you want to study the commands just a little bit more. Link is in the description. And so I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye. Go on donkey. Let's go right off into the sunset. That's not here because it's eternal day.